Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at exothermic and endothermic reactions. These are reactions that transfer energy to the surroundings or take in energy from the surroundings. Let's start by making a couple of notes so we understand the main idea behind these two types of reaction. So the first thing is that chemical reactions, they always involve a transfer of energy. Chemical reactions always involve transfer of energy. So we can take a look at the two types of reactions when we're talking about energy transfers. The first one is the idea of exothermic reactions. And what these do is they transfer energy to the surroundings. As a result, the temperature of the reacting chemicals increases. The temperature rises. Examples include combustion, which we've looked at before. This just means burning. So if something is burning, this is a chemical reaction, and it's exothermic. We also have neutralization reactions. Neutralization, when we have an alkali and an acid that react together, and when an acid and an alkali react together, we get neutralization. So this is an example of an exothermic reaction. We also have uses for these. One example is for hand warmers, chemicals inside hand warmers, and also self-heating cans. This is for heating up soup or coffee or something like that. These are our exothermic reactions. For our endothermic reactions, our endothermic reactions, these transfer energy, or sorry, they take in energy from the surroundings. They take in energy from the surroundings. In endothermic reactions, the temperature falls. The temperature of the reacting chemicals falls. We have a couple of examples of endothermic reactions. One is called thermal decomposition. This is when we break a chemical down using energy from the surroundings. That's thermal decomposition. And we have some uses. One common use is a sports injury pack. And we'll see how that works in a moment. Sports injury packs. These are used when someone hurts themselves. It cools down and this can be placed on a joint or on a muscle to reduce pain and to reduce swelling. So that's our endothermic reactions. So this is an overview of the two types of reaction in terms of energy transfers. Let's just have a look at the uses and see how they actually work. So we can recap both exo and endothermic reactions in a slightly more visual way so that it helps us to understand them just a little bit better. Here is an example of an exothermic reaction. There's two reacting chemicals in the boiling tube and in this reaction energy is transferred to the surroundings from the reacting chemicals. If you were to look at the temperature on the thermometer, you would see the temperature would rise. So in this case, there is a rise in temperature of the reacting chemicals. This is an exothermic reaction. If we were to look at an endothermic reaction, this is slightly different in that energy is transferred to the reacting chemicals from the surroundings. Energy is transferred from the surroundings to the reacting chemicals. In this case, the temperature would not rise, but it would actually fall. There is a fall in the temperature. This is an endothermic reaction. We can take a look at some examples of where these things are useful. So let's take a look at the example of an exothermic reaction first. It can be used in self-heating cans. So here's a can of self-heating soup. At the bottom there, there's a button. And if we've got a view of the inside to see what's going on, on the inside of this can, you can see there that we've got a view of the inside and in this region here, we've got the soup. So the soup would be kind of in that region there, in the main part of the can. But underneath, we've got these two separate chemicals and they are separated by a thin membrane. Separated by a thin membrane. That keeps those two chemicals separate. But when we push the button underneath, if you push the button, it makes a hole in the membrane and it allows those chemicals to mix. And those chemicals react together. They've been chosen specially 
because they cause an exothermic reaction. So there's the heat energy being transferred from the chemicals to the soup. And you would see that as the energy is transferred, the temperature of that soup, or it could be coffee or something like that, goes up. No external heating required. And then you end up with a nice warm can of soup. So this is one use of an exothermic reaction. What about endothermic reactions? You may have seen something like this before. One common example is in the use of a sports injury pack. So if you injure yourself doing sports, sometimes you need a cooling pack uh, for the injured joints or muscles. And what we have, if we're looking on the inside here, is we have two separate chemicals, one on the inner pack and one on the outer pack. And these are chosen because they cause an endothermic reaction. So when we apply some pressure or we squeeze the pack, the inside pack breaks open, the two chemicals mix and react together, and we see a fall in the temperature of the pack. The temperature goes down, and then we can use this to apply to an injured joint or an injured muscle. This would help to reduce pain and reduce swelling. So this is an example of the use of an endothermic reaction in a sports injury pack. So there we have it, a summary of exothermic and endothermic reactions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.